Just before I start, I was debating with somebody who has become 50. I said, are you in the golden age? He says, but I'm too young to join it. Now, and I started wondering, maybe we as an organization need to check whether we are starting too young. You know, I retired at 55. So you can see it's many, many years. I'm in my 70s. So it's many, many years since I retired. But you know, by the time you retire, you are called an old man. Now in my 70s, I realized how young 50 was. That's a child, a boy. <laughs> so when you start asking them to come for a meeting of old people, they feel like you are making them old and they are not yet old. So maybe we need to come to 60. That way, even if you try to deny you are old, it can be seen in your cheeks. <laughs> so we may need to start uh, looking for... Um, because you see, Golden Age is called an affinity group. There are people with similar, um, what do you call it, similar interests, similar challenges, and because of those um, challenges, they want to share together what, what, they, what they need, how they can help themselves, and then how they can do ministry together because of, because of that. My prayer is that um, you will still have enough people even if we moved, the, even if we moved it to, to 7, to 60, there will still be enough people. And I know the reason we went to 50 was so that you don't call a meeting and nobody turns up. Uh, so can I hope that um, this group will continue to grow and that the people who are old will agree to attend so that we don't have to import young boys to join us <laughs> because we are fearing we are too, we are too, 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 too few. I have to admit today I have golden ages and silver ages. You agree, silver are people below 50. See, gold is after 50. So I can see, I was told by the pastor, we have invited both people. And so in my discussion, I have to initially when I was told it was golden age, I prepared, I have something on. Then when I was told there will be people who are not golden age, I want to feel them to feel welcome. So my interest um, uh, today will be to try to talk about issues that can help the, the younger people to better prepare for old age. Is that okay? So that it's not just talking about old people and the things that are there. Let me talk to, I'm talking to young people. You need to prepare well for old age. And I want to give you five to six things you need to do. Old people can ignore me for the time being. But in case you didn't do it right, you can still do something about it. Number one, when you get into old age, the coming of the Lord is closer. Because the trumpet doesn't have to sound, you will go earlier. The Bible says the years of a man, according to the allocation of God, are three scores and a half. How many years are those? How many years are those? Hey, do you know mathematics? How many years are those? 70. That means, for people like us, we are on bonus. Because according to God, the years of a man are three scores and a half. It therefore means that you get to the age of 60, you should be conscious. Part of the ways of preparing for old age is increasing your friendship with the one you are going to see very soon. So the first thing about golden age, we remind ourselves, is how is the relationship with God? These are not the days you start thinking that you can backslide a little or side slide. No, 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 he could come immediately. So one of the things in old age is to be spiritually ready for Christ to take you home. And you must live your life with that wisdom. No decision you make should ignore that you could go very soon. I, you look frightened. No. The place we are going to is a good place. And we, every Christian looks forward to going. In fact, Paul said, for me to live 
<laughs> simply because Christ wants me here. My real gain is to die. Have you read that one? So that's the first thing is um, those of you who are not yet in golden age. That's the thing you need to set out. That you need to ask yourself, how is my walk with the Lord? The other day I was, I was invited by Nairobi Baptist Church. Old people, they have a different title, seniors. And I was telling them exactly the same. You cannot be in your 70s, 80s and playing around with your relationship with God. And you think it's a joke. I've just been telling a friend of mine, I was a patron of KSCF for more than, I became a patron in my 40s. So for more than 25 years, I was a chief patron. And I realized they'll never release me. So I suggested a change in the rules. I said, surely, when somebody is over 65, he should not have a post. His job should be to advise. And you don't require a title to advise. Are we together? So we agreed at 65, everybody should leave titles in KSF. It was taken to the council. The council approved it. And so it was agreed. All people having titles must be 65 and below. That's the way I thought bring her. Because that rule checks me out. I was already over 65, so I was soon removed. So you need to get to where you understand the truth. That the most important thing for an old person is relationship with God. Not preaching to others, preaching to himself. How is your walk with God? This idea of holding posts and refusing with them is a sign you are not going home and you are not preparing for it. You should not be trying in your seven test to be called elder, to be called what? Leave it to others. Are we together? Yeah. Because you know it doesn't add. Are you aware? And I hope pastor will forgive me for saying this. That you are not anointed because you are called pastor. You become pastor because you are anointed. The two are not, they are not related. Many pastors have no an, an pastor anointing. Many people are not pastors, have pastoral anointing. Because anointing and title have no relationship. Are you aware that Paul was never Apostle Paul? He never became Apostle Paul. He was Brother Paul, who happened to be, and I, I hope you get that. And don't quote me. Quote his friend Peter. Peter said, the writings of Brother Paul. <laughs> Not Apostle Paul, but Brother Paul. So it's very important to understand, if you really are going to get into old age, you must prepare as a young person to relate with God and to find meaning in God. <laughs> you know, um, that, that issue of title can be a problem. I was a, man, a senior manager with Shell. One moment, everybody is calling you, sir, whatever. Then one day, I retired. So when somebody asks you, who are you? You have no title. Unless, of course, you want to lie. That's why old people keep saying, I used to be a DC. Now, used to be. We, we don't even know what a DC is. Now we have new titles, governors. Are we together? So you need to find your meaning in God rather than in titles, because titles come and go. That's one of the most important things about preparing for old age. Find meaning in God and be ready for him. And you are happy to go whenever he chooses. Don't commit suicide. Because committing suicide is one way of ensuring you go to hell. Because you see, the word of God says, do not commit murder. So if you murder even yourself, it's a way of saying, I want to go to hell. That's why it's very interesting how shakahora could happen with anybody who reads the Bible. Because somebody tells you to commit suicide. You tell him, now I know, you must be operating under the devil. Now, because you see, it's contradicting the scriptures. So we are not suggesting you start wanting to die. You leave that to God, but you must be ready for it. Am I clear? So that's really what we are talking about. So find your meaning in God, not in titles. Do not find your meaning in the job you are doing. Because when you retire, you will be confusion. In fact, somebody, the late uh, psychiatrist called Dr. Gatere said, and I have never forgotten what he said, he said, 
people without meaning in life and have not prepared themselves for life after retirement die within three years. And remember that time retirement was what age? 55. He said, and he gave examples, you retire and as, as a CEO of a company. Then you got, he gave example of a Nyeri. You go to Nyeri and you go to the shopping center. They don't know who you are. So you go to the shopping center, they are talking, and you tell them, I'm, I'm Kamau. Okay, so you are Kamau. Then they continue talking. Finally, you ask them, do you know who I am? I'm the former CEO of Koko Koko Kiki. Now, they have never heard of Koko Koko Kiki. So, oh, is it? Okay, they continue talking. He has ignored three, four times. Soon enough, he loses meaning, and within three years, he is dead. In fact, the example he gave is a, he said is a, is a real, real example of a guy who retired being senior, and in the final years before retiring, he sent his wife to the rural area to develop the coffee farm so that they would use it for retirement. But he would, he's the one, of course, with the money. He comes and, uh, and pumps the money. When he retired, he wants to get involved in managing the coffee farm. So he comes and says, ah, mama, now that I'm here, we are going to do the following. The wife feels like laughing, but stops herself. She's a very respectable wife. Says, before we do that, let's wait until Grigasha comes. Grigasha is a cuckoo word for the agricultural officer. Grigasha. When Grigasha comes, give him the idea. He normally advises us. He's a good man. One day, Grigasha comes. Now you understand Grigasha. Grigasha comes. When Grigasha comes, he says, can I please call for me the owner of the home? He says, I'm the owner. No, no, I don't mean you. The woman. He is already very offended. He is the one who built this stone house. He is the one who did everything. But the neighbors are calling the home. Belong. Of course, they have never seen him. They don't know who he is. Call the owner of the home. Now, after he feels he fighting a stranger. So he finally gives in and calls, uh, calls his wife. When the wife comes, he says, the, 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 the wife says, Ah, it's good. This is the Grigasha I told you about. Tell him what you are telling me. The man stands, starts telling the story. The Grigasha and the wife burst into laughter. Because the idea is so strange. You know, he was running big things in Arabi. It did not include coffee farming. <laughs> so what, the idea is undoable. And they told him that. Do you think he slept here that night? At the shopping center, he's in trouble. At home, he's also in trouble. So he now has to lock himself up. He realizes his suggestions. The wife is not refusing, very respectful, but he realizes. He was convinced by the Grigacha, his idea was foolish. But whether that is true, who is he now? Within three years, he was dead. So you need to understand the point I'm giving you. Preparing to find your meaning in God. Not in titles, not in jobs, not in money. It's very, 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 very important. And of course, I, I went through it as I retired. When I discovered, unless I want to lie to people, I'm nothing. I'm simply a brother. No, no. Because that's, that's the thing. That, and that allows, once you find meaning in God, helps you. There are people who used to be elders here. They are no longer elders, isn't it? And sometimes they want to call me elder. Now, please, add emeritus. Now, you are not a real one. You are a fake one. So, it's very important to understand, find your meaning in God not in titles. Once you find your meaning in God, you know he values you. Whether you are old or young, he values you. And you know one of these days, he's preparing a home for you in heaven. Are we together? So that's the first thing we must deal with. And it's very important you prepare. So find a way, be well before you retire, of meeting God consistently on your own. I know some of you have family authors. And I know you quote the family that the family that prays together stays together. But that's not adequate. Christianity is not a couple religion. It's individual. So in addition to praying as a couple, you must pray on your own. You must find a way. And I discovered that as a young couple because once we were married in 1979, and you see, I'd been single, spending time, even when we shared a house with somebody, my room was separate, I'll go there, lock myself, pray. Now, once you marry, 
<laughs> you'd have to tell your wife what you are locking. Because whether you are in the toilet, and we are just the two of us in the house, you don't lock the toilet. What are you like locking? You got the bathroom, you don't lock. It's who? Now, that means for about three months, I realized we are always praying together, never praying on our own. It's not I discovered something is wrong. That you need time you can talk to God on your own. After all, sometimes you want to report your wife. But how do you report her to God with her hearing? <laughs> so your prayers are no longer honest. Am I communicating? So you need a time when you can say, God, thank you for giving me a wife. But the way she's looking at me with bad eyes, I'm in trouble. Then the Lord will tell you, eyes don't eat. Enjoy <laughs> your marriage. Am I communicating? It's very important to understand you need one of the ways of ensuring you meet God is that idea of prayer on your own. We made a decision with Rebecca from that time. In the evening, we pray together. In the morning, I wake up, go to a different place. She goes to a different place, read her Bible, meet the Lord on her own. When we meet in the evening, we can share what the Lord is telling each other separately. Am I communicating? And of course, because it's very rare for you to die at the same time. If you don't know how to pray on your own, then your spouse dies. How do you live? You must learn how to be, be many without forgetting single. Am I clear? So it's important. That's one of the ways of ensuring you prepare for old age. By learning to meet God on your own. You know, Jesus had a disciples. There were many. But then the Bible tells us you'd wake up early in the morning. Not with Peter or John, but on his own. If the Son of God felt the need to meet God on their own, on his own, how about you? So one of the most important things in old age is that idea of being able to talk to God. Initially, your children are part of you. Then they leave home one after the other. And then they are so busy, you keep calling them to come. They say, Papa, I'm coming. Two months ago. Papa, I'm coming. Four months ago. Now, if that's where you are going to find your meaning in children, please understand clearly, Ali. Children are not part of the marriage. They were never meant to be part of the marriage. When God saw the problem Adam had, he never said, I'll make you children. He just made a spouse. Are we together? But children come as visitors. I agree, long-term visitors. But they are still... Let me give you the arithmetic so that you understand. If you marry at 25 and die at 85, okay, no, let's not go to 85, which are people are going to. Let's go to 85 because there are many people. You can look at the example. For how long have you been married? Hey, you never did mathematics. How many years? You, you marry at 25, you die at 85. How long are you married? 60 years. Do you know out of those 60 years, only 20 of those years will there be children? If you come to my home, you have to check pictures whether we ever got to children. Because they are not there. I kept when my grandchildren, when my grandchildren are brought to me, there'll be somebody. But for now, we are just the two of us. <laughs> so some of you who are young, and I'm talking now to ladies, you are tied up to your children, you are not properly prepared for old age. Because one of those days the children will leave. And the man you abandoned, <laughs> you have to find a way of befriending him. But he forgot how to talk to you. Every time he asks you, say, don't you not have children? And it starts very early. Once the baby is born, many women just tie themselves to the baby. You touch her and say, what, what's wrong with you? I'm assuming we are all married. Are we all married? Yeah, so I can talk without uh, putting bricks. Okay. So, if you know, you, are, you, you have a child, he's five, five months, but whenever your wife, husband touches you, say, what's wrong with you? Can't you have a baby? My friend, that baby is a temporary visitor. If you ignore your husband long enough, he will know how to, what to do about himself. By the time you become available, he himself will not be available. It's a level of foolishness to... Treat a visitor who is coming and going better than the person you stay with for many years. I remind you, children will be with you for 20 years and you might last for 60 in your marriage. 40 years. Can you see how little the time of the children is? 
how can you so part of the preparation for old age is ensuring you treat your children as you should as visitors not part of your marriage that's why if you get no children your marriage will still last not a kikuyu marriage i mean a christian one you know in a kikuyu marriage you pay dowry isn't it and what's the dowry for dowry is a fee for a child bearing machine and when you buy a machine and it doesn't deliver you return back to the seller isn't it and you get back your payment am i communicating that's why you know dowry is refundable are you aware dowry is as long as the instrument you bought did not do what it was expected of it because to a to a kikuyu without children you are not a wife a wife is a child bearing machine but that's not christianity the bible is telling us the reason why women came to marriage is to be helpmeet not to bear children but to be helpmeet children are by are by product your marriage is complete with or without and even if they come <laughs> by the time you are our age you can't tell whether we had children or did not have except when people are visiting so i think you need to sort out that as a way of preparing for your old age are you tied up to your children and sometimes they are so tied to children that adult children mess up their marriages are we together your children come and i'm not talking to to my fellow golden ages your children come home <laughs> they give you all 5000 <laughs> then they give you 1000 and yours is given publicly the one to the mother is secretly <laughs> so what happens only the one that so your wife reminds you see you can buy now meat i saw you are given but has what are you start the ones that enters will there be a marriage in old age no and who is causing the trouble your own children but real problem is not your children it's the couple who allowed children to become marital counselors no that's not no more children should not be the counselors of their parents call an aunt call an aunt to talk to them not you so it's important to understand that this issue of and we are still on the we are still on the first point learning to find your meaning in god not in children not in jobs that will how you to have an old age where you enjoy you know we 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 my last born finish university 07 which is not yesterday once they finish university they start living and sometimes they they live in a short while others they live permanently now it's very and remember even if they are not married they still live am i communicating so you need to understand that you can only enjoy old age when you have handled the issue of do you find your meaning in your sons and daughters if that's where you find your meaning you will not have a good old age because children will soon discover you depend on them and they will soon start manipulating remember whoever pays the piper determines the tune and many children who are supporting their parents are messing up their old age That's why you'll find a mother who if, if you have four children the first one gets a child you go there for three months you come back to check whether your command is still alive now then then you go to the another one is get born you go to another one when five ten years you have hardly stayed with your husband and the children are very happy with you <laughs> sure there's something wrong with you you think you can go three months leaving your man you come back he's there like a statue something has been lost friendship i have written a book on friendship and i quote akiku saying in the book saying dogone makinya friendship is missing one another so you can enjoy just staying with your children you know babysitting the new baby whatever there's nothing wrong with helping but be in a hurry to come back are we together all of that is because you find your meaning in your marriage in god who ordered you to be married and remember even in old age you don't have the freedom to leave each other he says i hate divorce so it's very important and you know this it was not normal those days now we are hearing of people in their 70s divorcing each other 60s 70s divorcing each other 
And part of it has to do with the children. So it's something that you must understand very, very clearly. Maybe I should say this. Please understand that parenting adult children is a totally different thing from parenting, from parenting children. And it was like that in the, in the Bible. If you go to Deuteronomy, go to Leviticus, it's clearly stated. Somebody was to obey you until the age of 20. When they become 20 and above, they are on their own. They become soldiers. They are independent. <laughs> That's why when they cross the Red Sea, anybody 20 years and above was assumed to be an adult, Suppo was supposed to learn about God and trust him. So when they went to the desert, and then they were afraid of entering Canaan, God said, anybody who was 20 years when he crossed the Red Sea must die in the desert. And they went round until all of them were dead. My friend, if you are 19 years, 11 months, 29 days, and you actually refused to go to, go to Canaan, you still did not die. It was assumed as your parents who told you not to go. So your parents died, but you lived. If you are 20 and above, even if it's your parents who told you not to go, you will see you died. Because you are old enough to have told your parents, let's not disobey God. So you need to understand now as parents, we, I'm talking about us, with adult children, that God will hold them accountable. When the book of Timothy, Timothy Paul is telling Timothy, among the elders and deacons, don't allow anybody who does not manage his own well. He was not talking to golden ages. Because you see, by the time you are 60, 70, in the same church, there will be you and there will be your son and they are also going to have children. Am I communicating? So he's not asking a golden age that you cannot become an elder because your son is not learning his own well. Am I, are you getting my picture? So it's important to understand the rule is if you have young children, manage them well. If you don't manage them well, don't enter into leadership in the church. If your children have left home, even if they are drug addicts, whatever they are, it cannot stop you being a leader in the church. Because they are now held accountable for their decisions. Am I communicating? Are you getting where I'm getting it in the scriptures? Yeah. God held accountable 20-year-old, even if the parents are the ones who had misled them. So, at 20 years, I want us to go to see a witch doctor. At 20, at 20 years, you are allowed to say, I fear God. I will not go to see a witch. But if it's a seven-year-old, does he have an alternative? No. So, if you understand then, you need, now that God does not hold you accountable for the decisions of your, of your children, then don't enter into their marriage. Let them run their life. And one of the most hurting thing, I'm talking to fellow 70-year-olds, <laughs> one of the most hurting thing is to see them making wrong decisions, even against your own advice. And the real, when they look, to, they look at you, they ask, Utadu. Old people, are you going through that? Yes or no? Are you going through that? Maybe then you have special people. The children, once they are adults, they already know they know certain things you don't know. So they'll make their own decisions. And just like they have an adult, let me again put it clearly. An adult parent can give advice, but he cannot give instructions. Why? The Bible is clear. It says, children, obey your parents. <laughs> when it comes to the Old Testament Ten Commandments, it doesn't say obey. What does it say? Honor. If I'm 70, if my mother was alive, she would be around 100 years. I am still supposed to honor her. At no time are you allowed not to dishonor your parents. Obey them. That's not from the Bible. There is nowhere in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation where adults are supposed to obey their parents. That's scripture. Now, if you come to Kukuland, that's not, a, the, not their Bible. Their Bible says, even at 100, I must obey my parents. But I'm a Christian, and Christianity does not require me to obey my parents. So your adult children are not required by the scriptures to obey you. They are supposed to obey, but honor you. Are we together? Now, once you understand that, 
And you therefore understand that God will not hold you accountable for their wrong decisions. Then be very careful. Don't give instructions. Give advice. And the two are very different. When I was in Shell, I was a manager. I gave instructions. People disobeyed them at their own risk. Then I registered a consultancy firm after I, after, after I retired. And I've consulted for many organizations. I give, I'm given a contract. I do the work. I make the recommendations. I get my check. After some time, I wonder, did they do what my, I, I recommended? I still remember one Somali uh, company. And I rang the, the museum to ask, hey, how are you? OK. How did the project go? The museum turned out and said, sorry. Mr. Nganga, we forgot to pay you. <laughs> they said, no, 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 no. You paid me. I quickly withdrew. Because the message was clear. Consultants are device. They don't give instructions. Am I communicating? And I discovered that two are different. Similarly, young parents give instructions. Old parents give advice. Advice is not to be obeyed, it to be considered. Instructions are to be obeyed. So as old people, you must understand that. Uh, Desta University did a study. My wife has been lecturing in Desta for the last about 30 years. And they did a study in one of their research. And they found that 30% of all marriages, separation, and divorce are being caused by in-laws. For what in-law put mother-in-law? No, no, no. I mean father-in-law. <laughs> I mean both. <laughs> this is a research fact that many of us are messing up our children's marriages because we expect to instruct them rather than advise them. And when you give advice and somebody doesn't, know, doesn't follow your advice, you remain friends because you are telling him, this is what I would think, but your decision. Even if you make a different one, you are still my son, our friendship remains. Your children need to know that even when they don't follow your advice, you are still friends. Am I communicating? So that they understand your relationship. And the moment they know that you are advising, they will keep coming home. But if they think when they come home, you will tell them how they are disobedient, will they visit you? No. But the problem is not them. The problem is you. Like maybe you have a single, you have a single child who is not yet married, and they are in their thirties. Every time they come home, uh, may I help you? If you can't get somebody to marry, sure I can help you. Do you think they'll come next week? No. When you're the adult, let's listen to God. And although in Luya, in the Luya Bible or Luya customs, you are useless unless you marry. In the Bible one, you are okay, even if you don't marry. So if you're a Christian parent, you must understand. <laughs> you know, when, when Isaiah is talking about it, he says that some of the eunuchs, some of the people who, who never got children, are more important in God's house. Are we together? Yeah, then in the New Testament it says, some of you are single by choice. Have you read that one? Yeah. So the, the New Testament, and you can read my book, I have written for young people called Finding a Life Partner. One of the chapters says, not everybody is meant to marry, according to my understanding of the Bible. Although you keep saying, not my son. But your son is, <laughs> your son is one of the people in the Bible. Are we together? If they are Christians. So why must you decide that your son must get and now he has no peace whenever he visits? Because you, what's wrong with you? Are you biologically okay? Now, some of the questions <laughs> they are getting will make them leave home. And so you will not even be an advisor, leave alone an instructor. So I hope you understand for you to stop that kind of behavior, it must be because of your relationship with Jehovah. Am I right? Otherwise, you can be in church, but you are still following Luya customs. They are the ones controlling you. And although we were talking about the importance of the older people advising the younger, <laughs> it needs to be understood. You are better off saying nothing. Because if you advise people, they will go back to traditions. That's what you believe in, isn't it? So some of you who are old and are not advising, thank you, continue. Until you yourself sort out your relationship with God, don't advise any young person. Because you, age does not give godliness. It's your fellowship with God. So do not assume as if, because you are 60 and this one is 30, 
He may be closer to God than the six-year-old. It's not a chronological. Am I communicating? So that's why we, I wanted it to be understood. I realize I've taken long on that point, so I'll not be able to go through the other points. Um, because like I had said, I want us, I want us to finish around five, and I can see I was, it will soon be four o'clock. And I, want, I told the pastor, in a group like this, the most important thing is discussion. But am I clear on that first point? That for you who are not yet in the golden age, it matters to you. For us, you are already there. We require a rescue plan. Because I've already been messing up, isn't it? The good thing is he's a faithful and forgiving God. He can still sort, it out, sort you out in your haters. The only requirement is you repent. Are we together? And start repairing your relationship with your children, your relationship with your spouse, your relationship with the people around you. So that's the first thing if you are preparing for old age. It's the first thing to sort out. The second thing you must sort out, and it's important, is, let me call it by its right name, social preparation. Social preparation, and this is now useless for the old people, I'm talking to young people, means you start asking God, where would he want you to retire? You are seeing your 40s, and you want to get a picture of where you should retire. If you are intending to retire in a vehicle, you start preparing now. This is the time you get a house. That's not the issue now. Get friends. Social preparation for retirement is making friendship with the people you spend old age with. The trouble with old age is you have time to talk, but nobody to talk to. Am I communicating? So it's important. And if you can dis discuss that when you are 40s, then five of you can buy land next to each other, isn't it? And because you are around the same age, you'll be each other's company in old age. This week, we lost Reverend uh, Wanjiao, one of the former moderators of PCA. When they were young people, they went and bought land somewhere in Karen. And because it was a bush area, they were able to buy a lot, then subdivide it among themselves. That is Wanjiao, Dr. Gatere, those PCA old people who are, who are now in their 90s or dead. And uh, they subdivided it. One day, they retired. That's where they are dying one after the other. But they have had each other in old age. Am I communicating? But they did not prepare in old age. They prepared when they were young. So you think about it. That's why, for example, when I retired, I did not go back to Nyandarwa. Because I had not done preparation there. My friends are in Nairobi. So I must ensure that before retirement, I have a house in Nairobi without mortgage, and my friends are around Nairobi. I'm not communicating. That's social preparation. Now, the reason I told old people to ignore me is because if you're already uh, 70, <laughs> I can't ask you to start moving. It will kill you faster. So stay where you are. At least even if you don't have friends, you, you are trying to get. Am I right? Yeah. But for you younger, it's an important thing. Social preparation. Do not start thinking that you are going to end up in your rural home, and yet you are doing nothing about preparing. You know, I go to Nyandarwa, and I'm talking to people, and they are old people. Remember, I told you I did my phone for 1971. From then on, was I kind of moved out of the place. It is 50, 53 years ago, is it? Now, all the wazes in gray hair I meet were not born. So I can't know. Then who are you? I can't know them. They were not even born. So I have to ask, whose son are? Oh, you are son of my classmate. We did KP with him. But the person I'm talking to is an adult with gray hair. So you need to understand, this is not the right time to look for friendship. That's why I retired in Nairobi, where I have my friends. We can go to a Java, assuming we, our pension allows it, and just spend, spend time together. The other day we were, somebody came to, to see us and we were, the three men that uh, were in, in my line in the, wedding, in the wedding were together. So I told this guy, he's, somebody in his 40s, oh, these are the friends I had in my wedding. He said, and you are still together? What did you expect? Were you expecting us to start hating each other? 
said, you know, we in our 40s, the people in the queue are normally flower men and flower girls. Once the, once the wedding is over, they are dry. So when you can't keep dry flowers. Now you need to understand, you need to keep old friendships. These friendships you are keeping later in life. They meet a, a, a senior guy like John Nganga in Cheryl. And they want to befriend you. Why? They are befriending a big man. <laughs> but the guys that I was with in the university, like the two people, they know me when I could not afford a, sh a, a, a suit. They, it doesn't matter what I get or don't get, they know me. We were in fellowship together those years, 50 years ago. So they know me. It's much easier for when I say something, for them to understand it with my background, that all these younger people who have become my friends with time. So you must find as a way of preparing your retirement. Number one, I have said, find out where you retire. Are your friends going to be there? Number two, if they are not there, start early to befriend people. But number two, keep old friendships. The Muzungu said, and I agree with him, and, and old, new friends are silver, old friends are gold. So you don't understand. And I have many friends because of my speaking in campuses continuously. I have friends of every age who by the grace of God have kept, I've kept with young people all the years. But I do know they are meeting a preacher. <laughs> they are preaching, they are meeting a guy talking about Jesus. I have my friends who know the nganga who could not preach. Am I communicating? In fact, we have formed a, a fellowship we call the Flame from the Seventies. You are not allowed to join unless you're in the university between 70 and 79. <laughs> so we are all in our 70s and 80s. But we meet, we enjoy. Bishop Ado is one of us. The other day he came for a fellowship and he loved and said, Nganga, you know I've not loved like that long. And I told him, because at the time he was still a bishop, you can't love like that. Bishops are not allowed to love like that. But you know, to us in the meeting, he is not a bishop. He is Bonnie. Well, that's who he was when we were in campus. He was Bonnie. So he can enjoy himself. You need such people who don't know your title, don't care about your title. And remain, retain the friendship. Don't allow the silver to replace gold. And the gold people are the friends you have kept from the time you are young. I was in Kuala, I was in, like I said, I was in Kuala two weeks. Last week, actually, is for the national convention of KSF. And I just told one of my friends who settled in Mombasa, can we go together? We drove, he picked me at the airport, and we drove to Kuala High School, and we drove back. We could not keep quiet. We were even getting lost because of talking. Because we have a fellow, we were the best couple for them, but they settled in Mombasa. We have many, many stories. Can't get finished. And you leave that place. By the time he dropped me at the airport, you feel relaxed. Am I communicating? So part of the preparation for old age, and I'm telling you especially the young ones, invest in friendships. So when we come for our flame from the 70s, the other day, um, Kalonso came. He had to leave his body. He was, when he was vice president, he came for the fellowship. He had to leave his bodyguards outside. Here, he is not honorable. He is Steve. And we called him Steve, Steve. And basically, who can call him any title? We know him. When I was a chairman, 1975, I was the chairman of the CU. And he was the secretary to the Saturday Service Committee. So I know him. So that, that, those are the people you read. Unfortunately, many people, once they get titles, they drop their friends, the gold ones, and they keep their silver ones. The day they lose their power, the silver don't show up. Because they only met them because of their title. Are we together? So you need to ask yourself, how well are you in that, in that area? And the scriptures are clear. The importance of society is, 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 is very, very critical. In fact, just look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. It is saying, <laughs> don't keep bad company. Bad company will corrupt good morals. It's all talking about the importance of friendship. The importance of company. Then Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and 25 is saying, if you don't have friends, you'll, you'll, you'll be like dubia. You know what dubia is? Tea without sugar. 
Why? The sugar is at the bottom, but there's nobody to start up. You drink coffee, you drink coffee. When you read the book, you say, Hiya. you mean there was sugar here? Some of you are like that. God has put sugar in you, but you have no friends to start up. No wonder you taste so bad. You need people who might say you have given them right of interference. Right of interference. What does that mean? They do not think they are risking your friendship by telling you off. The other day I was with a group of my, group, group of my friends, my age mates, and I told them where I'm going and where I come from, where I'm preaching. I said, Nganga, you think you're a child? You're a boy. You can't go like that at your age. Now, they don't ask permission. They just, they just tell me off. Me, I thought they should congratulate, congratulate me. But <laughs> I'm not communicating. You need people with the right of, what did I call it? Right of? Of course, the primary person must be your spouse. But he is the only one. After all, you think it's a woman talking. You also need men who can tell you off. Oh, your husband talks, he says, this is how the women think. You need a few women who can tell you off. Of course, they themselves must fear God. That was the first thing. Don't get company of people that don't value God. Because you can't go far with them. But that's what we call social preparation for old age. And it's important that you have it and you spend time with it. With the, with the people. So if you are 40, how are you doing? Have you already dropped the ones that were your friends in your 20s? And these days, when, when you have internet, in other words, you pay the internet monthly fee, you can talk to people at no cost, isn't it? So even if your friends are in Mombasa, you can talk free of charge. Invest in friendships. Do not think that you park them there like a car. When you get to 70, you go for them. No. You need to spend time with them throughout your, your life. You know, there are people I was with in, in, in Alliance, they left Alliance, like you can see, uh, more than 50 years ago. And uh, I, left, uh, for, I left from 673. And uh, we meet. We are so excited we have met. After three sentences, you don't know what to say. You don't want to ask, uh, uh, how is your family in case he divorced? So you are so careful. You start talking about, hey, Karen Francis, hey. Sanders, you are talking things that don't relate to now. That, that means it's true you had friendship, but the friendship died because you never looked after it. Friendship is missing one, another. Dogone, makinya. You can find that in my book on friendship. So you must, if you want to enjoy your old age, you must sort it out. You must find out people. They are Christians. But you're not talking about preaching. We are talking about being with the people who help you to relax, who can help you and talk to you, who can interfere in your, with, you, with what you are doing. They can tell you of. That's what we really are talking about. Those are two, isn't it? Thirdly, you are preparing for old age. And I'm talking especially, again, to the younger lot. I think it will be important that you prepare very clearly on something that can continue beyond work that you find meaning in. Remember, I've written like a small book called Discovering Your Life Purpose. That life's purpose is life's purpose. You cannot retire from life's purpose. In order to fulfill my purpose, when I was working with Cheryl, I did certain things. But I must continue with my purpose because the finishing of my purpose is a grave. Am I communicating? And that means, even after retirement, you must continue participating in things that help fulfill your life's calling. But do you even know what your life's calling is? Because if you are doing your life's calling, it will continue. It will not be interfered with. You might not be able to do as much because the body slows down. These days, I, uh, when people start for too long, I sit. And I'm, I'm, I have no apologies. These legs have carried me for more than 70 years. How can I complain now that they can't carry me for too long? I'm okay, I'll sit, like because I preach in campuses, and their worship can be a whole hour of jumping. Now, after 20 minutes, I sit down and allow them to continue. The body, the body may, may change, 
But through this, you must continue with your calling despite the body. Am I communicating? Three things about that, that idea. Since you will not retire from it, it means you start thinking early. How, if I left this work, how can I find my calling without, after retirement? Think about it. And you continue, with, see how to restructure, to still be within your calling when there is no flow of money. Are we together? Yeah, because you, in retirement, you are dealing with less money. Okay, if you invested right, it might be more. But for most people, the income levels go down in retirement. So you must ask yourself, how, how can I do it? Maybe I should tell you something about my calling. You know, my name is John. My parents were not born again. So when I gave my life to the Lord, by the time I was getting baptized, my pastor told me that, of course, that was then, those, those are the things those days, you must get a baptism name. <laughs> I know it's not in the Bible, but that's what the church required. My pastor, I just came with a name, Krikokaka, you know, some name. So the pastor asked me, is that in the Bible? I said, I don't know. He told me, no, no. Go outside. Think clearly. Who in the Bible represents what you want to become? You know that time there was not these terms about getting to know your calling, getting to know your purpose, were not being talked about. But that old man, he's dead now, was very clever. He told me, think long term. So I went outside. And the name... The person who came to my mind I would like to be is John the Baptist. The kind of person who helped to prepare people to be the way God wants them to be. And I went back and told my pastor, I want to be called John. That's why I'm John up to now. I'm Brother John up to now. Because it keeps reminding me my calling. And what I'm doing now <laughs> is to help you to better prepare for God. Am I right? Is that within my calling? Yes, there's nothing to stop it. The fact that my money is now less than before doesn't stop me. I, if I can't tell the ones far, I can tell the ones near. So find out. Because this third point is very, very important. Most people who don't have meaning in life because they don't have, they just sit at home watching TV, then after some time, they can't watch anymore. Then they want to sleep. But unfortunately, it's very interesting, very funny formula. Young, young children have time to sleep, but they don't want. Am I right? Sleep forces them, but they don't want it. Old people have time to sleep. They want it, but the sleep doesn't come. Around 3 a.m., they are counting the roofs. Old people, am I right? Yeah, and you, now you feel like, I'm not going to work. Let me sleep. But you just look up the city. Now, you need to understand clearly that you need something that makes you wake up. What do you wake up to? What is it you are trying to achieve? Not to earn money, but to serve the Lord. And when I use the word term, serve the Lord, it doesn't mean you are preaching. Some people's calling is not preaching. It is, remember, God cannot be served by any human being. It's not possible to serve God. The only way you do is you serve man to the glory of. So your calling is never to serve God. Your calling is to benefit man to the glory of. Even pastors, God doesn't require summons. It is we who require summons. Are we together? So your calling is not to serve God directly. It's to serve God's people for God's glory. So that means, for example, if you are your calling is in helping people to read, you can keep a library at home, isn't it? And you're not charging. You have become a librarian free of charge. Tell all the neighbors they can come borrow books. You'll be writing them down. As they come back, they must tell you what they read. Then you can discuss with them. That's a full-time calling. Am I together? That is if your calling is in that area. They think through, what can I do in my older years, within my body's abilities? It will be very important that you are able to answer that, that question. So, it will be important that, and I know I'm running out of time, on that social preparation, you ask, you ask yourself what you can do. Then go to the next one and ask, 
how can I continue with my calling into old age? I was very impressed again to Wanjao, used to, we used to use St. Andrews as our Sunday service place, even at the university. Uh, we used our, our, the, the halls were too small, so we used to use St. Andrews as our place. So we interacted a lot with that Moses. He has died at 92. Now, I was very happy to see last year, he was interviewed by the TV station of the Presbyterian. It's called CAC, CAC TV. He could hardly talk. He's in a wheelchair. And he's still talking about what need the church needs to do to fit into God's kingdom and to fulfill God's calling. In his 90s, he must have been 91 then, he is still uh, fulfilling God's calling in his life. So you ask yourself, what is it you have been called to do? Do it. Find out how to restructure it, to still do it, even after you have retired. It will mean that you are 80, joyful, active, enjoying your life. There's nothing worse than being idle. The Englishman said, idle hands or idle minds are the devils. And even in your 80s, you don't want to become the devil's workshop. So you must find out something to do. And if you are not doing it, there's a problem. And you're not talking about only ministry of in the church. After all, even if you want church, people will not come every day. So you need to ask, what is it I'm doing that is... So the things I do now in my retirement are all related to my calling. Some people think I'm a writer. I'm not. I, it's only that given the name John, I'm looking for any way to ensure I help people to be what God wants them to do. I began by talking within no time. Like, like now I gave a series of talks on VOK some 30 years ago. Then somebody said, I want those series. Can't you write a book? I wasn't writing. I had not written a book. Say, no, no, no. I'll type. Give me the material. I'll type for you. I realized I'm under pressure to produce a book. That's how my book, Friendship, came. By force, not, not voluntarily. And every book I've ever written is because I talked on it. People wanted to hear. Like now, I've written a book on stewardship, which I was handling earlier in the day. Again, I got invited. One church, Presbyterian, Anglican, Pentecostal, all of them are calling me on. And they say, what you are saying is a little different from the way we hear it. So I realized it's an area of need. So I put the material into a book. So now, I used to take three years to write one book. After I retired, I was restructured my time. Like, during COVID, I wrote four marriage books within the time because I was, we were locked up and my age mates we were supposed to stay, uh, to stay home. Now, I thought, I asked God, I normally go to preach. What do I do now? The idea that came is, all my notes on marriage, because I had no book on marriage. I tried to put them into a book. They turned out to be four different books. So, so I need, you need to understand all I'm doing. I spend a lot of time on it also. Um, I've just given, the, edit, the printer is now handling my that year the book. I have to deny in, in print. But the that year will come out in the next few weeks. All because it feel, it's fulfilling my calling. So I really would like to encourage you to find out what is your calling? How will you continue with it even after you have grown into old age. And we have agreed old age is not 50. Old age we have agreed is 60 and above. I want to just say two more so that, uh, so that I allow question time so that we can break, uh, break out by 5 o'clock. Number four, which is very important, I think it will be very, very critical that you prepare financially. <laughs> because as you grow older, opportunities for making money are less. It means, we say again in Kikuyu, okoro oreaga with in English. Old age is supposed to, to eat what you produce when you are young. So in your 20s is when you should be preparing for your 70s and 80s. And you know, there's a miracle thing called compound interest. If you decided that every month you'll be putting aside 1,000 shillings with a good financial advisor, 
By the time you are 60 and you have started at 25, you could very easily be promised an annuity which will give you something like 100,000 per month until you die. If you start that when you are 40, now that's more difficult. If you start at 60, it's impossible. So time is a miracle of compound interest. Are we together? And it's important to understand. So this financial preparation means that you cannot wait to discuss how you live in retirement in your 40s. You're already getting too old. You need to have started in your 20s and that is. But of course, the Englishman said, better late than never. So even if you are 50, please try. It's only harder. So it's important to ask yourself. Remember, our parents were very clear. They were educating us at their pension scheme. So when you, when you finish school, they have a pension, isn't it? Ours are not liking the black pastor. No, they have their own problems. And they want to struggle with their problems. So it means for us seated here, you should not plan on your children helping you. If they help you, that's called bonus. You should know yourself how you operate in old age. Of course, if, uh, if you are sick or something happens that is beyond your income, people should help. Even the public, the church should help. But on a day-to-day eating, your ugali, surely, you don't require children to pay for your ugali and your sukumawiki. You should have planned in your old day, in your early years, what you shall eat. Just where you are limited, that you are going to retire at 60 and you are likely to die at 90. You have latter years. What have you kept? What are you preparing to keep? How can it last the period? That's why, for example, for you to operate without a pension scheme, it's not very clever. Three reasons. Number one, since you need the money anyway, why not put a pension scheme? Number two, the government, in order to encourage people to look after their own old age, actually make it tax deductible. Pensions are tax deductible. Why do you want to throw away money to the government? By investing elsewhere without primarily being having a pension scheme. Thirdly, I told you what I was told by some people I was consulting with. That many of our investments, at the time you need them, they are not there. For example, if somebody tells you, I have your debt, let me sell land, please give up. Because land can take the next five years without being sold. Am I right? He wants to pay you, but he's not getting a buyer, except somebody offering throwaway price. So you need to understand, old age requires liquidity. So even if you are a billionaire in assets, they are useless in old age. Old age, sickness is there, things are there, you require liquid cash and regularly, not once in a, in a while. So you need to prepare it. That's why it's important to have a pension scheme. If you don't have a pension scheme, have annuity. What is annuity? You sell a house you invested in, go to, 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 to a member of the insurance company, tell them, when I'm 65, I would like to get 100,000 shillings per month until I die. What do I need to buy that kind of annuity? And maybe your house is equal to that annuity. Now you, they, they get the money, but then they promise you a monthly liquidity of 100,000 shillings per, per month. Of course, even if it's 20,000, it will be better than nothing. Am I right? So it's important to ask yourself, are you preparing in that way or not? Surely. How can you say you are serious about... My, uh, sorry, we read Luke chapter 14, verse 28. God, Jesus said, people laugh at you. How can you be entering into something without preparing? How can you enter old age without? They were told to plan, cost, assess. You know, some people think that faith means you don't plan. Go to Luke chapter 14, and you see Jesus who taught us faith also taught us planning and budgeting. So it's important to ask yourself, how are you preparing for yourself financially? And remember, if you listen to me earlier, the amount is not the issue. All you require is, if, you are, if all you can get your liquidity is 50,000 a month, you force yourself under 50. Because we say the principle is, live within your means. 
So the amount doesn't matter. Even if you're earning a pension of half a million per month, you can operate above it. Am I right? And you'll be a struggler. But at least have something that is regular into old age that doesn't go until a certain time. It goes until you die. That way, even if your children don't give you money, anything doesn't happen, you, you know you are not waiting on them because God has given you wisdom and you are using it correctly. I must, I must find a way of finishing. But I hope I'm... Am I communicating? Neither is talking and communicating. The two are not the same. Am I communicating? Yeah, because that's, uh, that's, that's much more, more imp important. Hey, I have to find a way. It's already 16. It's already, it's already 4.15. So I must, but I promise a fifth thing, isn't it? The fifth preparation, and it's important, is what I call medical preparation. Medical preparation. And I will not have time to really deal with it. But three things about it. Number one, it means you look after your body when you are young. <laughs> when you grow old, it's when all the pains you had before start reappearing. So you must look at yourself... <laughs> Exercise when you are when you are young. The other day I went to the to a gym with a machine. After a bit of time on the machine, I started getting problems. I had to go to the doctor, and I said, yeah, "You are starting too late. You don't have those machines at your age." So I'm now left with walking and swimming because I can swim at my at my speed. Are we together? So it's important to understand as a way of medical preparation for old age. Start exercising. Ale, start eating a balanced diet. Ale, are we together? That's what, and start resting early. Those are three different things as part of that pre preparation. Resting. Some of you work like horses. But even horses rest, isn't it? So it's important to ask yourself in your 40s, are you getting time for exercise? Which is not the same as resting. This exercise is not rest. So you must get time for eating right, exercising right, and resting. Resting simply means your brain is not busy, your body is not easy, and it's important. In fact, God counted it as so important, he called it Sabbath. Am I right? So it's important to understand, God who created our bodies, know our bodies require Sabbath. And I'm not talking about old age. I'm saying you start early. But by the time you get into old age, it needs to be a pattern of living like that. But then, this is, this one maybe is a Kenyan problem. The trouble is, since you are not going to get a regular income that is high, you need a medical scheme. Are we together? The trouble with a medical scheme when you look for it in your 60s is that no insurance company wants to cover you. They know you. <laughs> they know you will give money and then take it. So, in fact, I normally recommend don't bother with outpatient. When they see you, they know you are, you know, if you take anybody over 70, most likely there is some, something, most likely, not always, but most likely there is some medicine he uses. So how can anybody agree to cover you? <laughs> they know you'll just take away the money. What I'm hoping one day is that the government will force them. How can I have been given insurance all these years? Now in, when I need it, remember the trouble is you take an insurance in your that is, you never get sick. Am I right? It's only your wife going for maternity. The rest of the time, you don't use it. <laughs> now you know that you need it. But they are not willing to give it. So my advice is, just before you retire, buy a medical scheme because the law will not allow them to throw you out. You're already there, isn't it? So even if you have a company medical policy, buy yours separate. Small one, half a million, 200,000 total, uh, total, total cover. So they end up being maybe 1,000 shillings only per year or something. But the important thing is you have put your leg inside. When you finally retire and you lose your employer's cover, you now say, I'm increasing it to 3 million. You're not asking to be assessed again. You have not assessed. Are we together? So now they just increase it. So it's important to understand that older people require medical cover more than the young people. You do not want that until the disease becomes <coughs> much more, because obviously whatever cover you have, a medical thing can come be audit. But at least the initial one, one or two, three millions, 
You should be able to cover yourself without asking relatives to come into it. So medical preparation includes having a medical cover. Now I better stop there otherwise we will not have the discussion I wanted. <laughs>